Welcome to our third video covering noteworthy incidents. If you're new to the channel, this series happens near the end of each month. Supporting our channel's growth is NordVPN, who have a special offer for our viewers. With NordVPN's support of today's video, here are some of the most interesting incidents that have taken place since late July. First off, let's take a look at engine fires and engine fire warnings. On July 10th, a JetBlue A321 landed at Newark's runway 22 right, with a small fire spotted coming from the aircraft's right engine cover. The NTSB has since confirmed that this fire was visible on the engine and has been deemed as an official incident under investigation. On July 28th, a cargo Lux 747-400 departing Zhengzhou in China was forced to return after a fire warning. The freighter was headed to Chicago and was only an hour into the flight before turning back. Powered by Rolls-Royce engines, the 747 is registered as Lima X-Ray Golf Charlie Lima. Flight data indicates that the aircraft had a number of diversions in the days leading up to July 28th. Our final incident related to engine fire warnings took place on August 12th when the GE-powered Ethiopian Airlines 7879 flying from Brussels to Manchester experienced a warning on descent towards its destination. The aircraft notified air traffic control, which positioned emergency services close to the runway. The jet landed safely, and there are no indications that emergency services needed to be used other than for inspection. On August 2nd, emergency services were scrambled to meet an American Airlines 777 in Tel Aviv following the pilot's request for an expedited landing due to a flat tire. Footage from the event shows emergency services chasing after the plane upon landing. All 170 people on board the aircraft were reported to be uninjured. The 21-year-old 777-200, registered as November 788 Alpha November, was operating flight AA-52 from Miami. August 2nd also saw an ETF Airways 737-800 strike a rabbit upon landing in Bremen, Germany. The rabbit was sucked into the engine, causing a million euro in damages, including 500,000 euro in aircraft repair costs, 400,000 euro to lease replacement jets, and 100,000 euro in other expenses such as crew transport, accommodation, and overtime. August 7th saw a Turkish Airlines A330-300 flying from Newark to Istanbul reject takeoff after the plane's crew members were advised that they were actually on Newark's taxiway P. The A330 was given clearance for takeoff from runway 22 right at the intersection of taxiway W. However, the wide body crossed 22 right and lined up with taxiway P to begin its takeoff. Subsequently, ATC cancelled the clearance and informed the pilots that the plane was actually on a taxiway and not a runway. The flight crew rejected takeoff at approximately 90 knots over ground, or 166 kilometers an hour. Having to stop from this speed, the aircraft brakes had to cool down for 45 minutes before departing. In the past month, there were two incidents involving unruly passengers and duct tape. The first took place on July 31st on a Frontier Airlines flight. This is what the airline had to say on the incident. During a flight from Philadelphia to Miami on July 31st, a passenger made inappropriate physical contact with two flight attendants and subsequently physically assaulted another flight attendant. As a result, the passenger needed to be restrained until the flight landed in Miami and law enforcement arrived. Frontier suspended the crew involved, which drew heavy criticism. Frontier told Simple Flying that the in-flight crew member's current paid leave status was in line with an event of this nature pending an investigation. Then, on August 10th, a teenager flying American Airlines had to be duct taped to his seat after getting into an altercation with his mother. The boy had also allegedly been trying to kick the window out of the plane. The flight from Maui to Los Angeles was diverted to Honolulu, leading to a four-hour delay for passengers. For airlines, the safety and security of passengers is the highest priority. For NordVPN, safe and secure internet browsing is its highest priority. So if you're back to flying on planes, you'll want to travel with a VPN installed on your devices. With 5,200 servers in 59 countries, 
NordVPN provides more servers to achieve the best connection speeds for your needs, and it's available on up to six devices. Once you're able to travel again, using NordVPN will protect your IP address at airports, hotels and cafes around the world with its top-level data encryption and a strict no-logs policy. Public Wi-Fi access will be safe. NordVPN also covers remote locations, allowing you to choose from thousands of servers worldwide. NordVPN stops you from being bombarded with ads as it keeps your browsing protected and your data won't be sold to advertisers. With a 30-day money-back guarantee, 24-7 customer support, and a strict no-logs policy to protect your personal data, you can rest assured that your data will stay protected, especially useful when traveling. Go to nordvpn.com slash simpleflying or use code simpleflying to get a two-year plan plus four additional months with a huge discount. Thanks for watching. Now back to the rest of the video. On August 3rd, an Austrian Airlines Airbus A320 flying from London to Vienna experienced some issues with its nose gear while departing Heathrow. With the nose gear doors failing to close and reports of lost nose wheel steering, the crew made the decision to return to Heathrow after burning off fuel. With the aircraft's problems in mind, the crew warned ATC that they expected to be able to vacate the runway very slowly. However, they could not completely rule out becoming stuck while vacating the runway and requested that no other aircraft line up behind them for approach. Hours later, the aircraft departed again, flying lower and slower than normal. Some have speculated that this was because its nose gear remained extended throughout the flight. Simple Flying reached out to Austrian Airlines, which simply told us that the aircraft returned to Vienna with crew only and had rebooked passengers. On August 6th, one of India's new presidential Boeing 777s was stuck for several hours at Bangalore's Hindustan Aeronautics Airport when it took a wrong turn. The aircraft had to be towed back to the parking bay prior to restarting the takeoff procedure the next day. The trainee pilot had turned left instead of right, leaving the aircraft stuck before the runway and unable to turn back and try again. This particular airport is only used for smaller military aircraft, leaving the plane stuck for hours. This is likely because towing equipment for larger planes had to be brought in from another facility. Also on August 6th, a two-year-old Embraer E195E2 operated by Azul suffered a heavy landing while arriving at Caxias do Sul International Airport in Brazil. This led to a tail strike and grounding of the aircraft, registered Papa Romeo Papa Juliet November. Azul had another incident that day when one of its E195E1s collided with a Gol Boeing 737-800 at Ilhéus International Airport. On August 12th, an Aeroflot A350-900 flying to Moscow from Antalya, Turkey, had its passenger oxygen masks deployed in flight. With no issues reported with cabin pressure, it appears that the plane's system detection had failed. Close to its destination, the jet then descended to about 20,000 feet before safely landing in Moscow. Two days later, on August 14th, a motorcyclist was hit by a landing Congo Airways Dash 8400 while crossing the runway of Lubumbashi Airport in the Democratic Republic of Congo. The aircraft's tires were damaged and the bike was destroyed. However, all 18 passengers and five crew on board were reported to be fine, although the motorcyclist was taken to hospital with serious injuries. Our final three stories all concern United Airlines. On August 3rd, a 767 flying from Frankfurt Airport to Washington Dulles faced an hour-long delay on the ground. The flight had already left the gate when the Federal Police informed the captain that an object that looked like a hand grenade had been found in a piece of baggage that missed the flight. According to the police, the grenade had been deactivated and placed on a quote-unquote steampunk sculpture. While the security incident was unfolding, a 56-year-old American responsible for the suitcase sat on the plane, blissfully unaware that he had prompted the delay. On August 7th, a United 777 flight from Newark to Athens was delayed for over an hour because a pigeon managed to get on board. After being spotted on the plane, the pigeon evaded capture by disappearing into a row of economy seats. Strangely, he was never found. 
And finally, on August 11th, a United 78710 landed at Newark's runway 22 right and vacated the runway via a high-speed turnoff. Proceeding from the turnoff to a taxiway, the aircraft struck some taxiway lights. Examining the runway diagram, we can see that making a right turn from turnoff B4 to taxiway B is an extremely sharp maneuver with a 150-degree turn. The Port Authority of New York and New Jersey confirmed that the incident took place, noting that there was no impact to operations with the damaged light immediately repaired. Pilots have noted that it is a fairly normal turn coming from this high-speed turnoff. However, it requires the plane to drive deep into the turn to ensure the main gears stay on the taxiway. As you can see, it's been a really eventful month. We certainly weren't able to cover everything in this video or go into as much detail as we would have liked. We also didn't include the tragic events unfolding in the Middle East as part of this video. Nonetheless, we'd love to hear from you in the comments if you thought there were too many stories this time around. As with all of our videos, there's a more detailed corresponding article on simpleflying.com. Check out the links in the description to learn more. And as always, share your thoughts on this video and any of the topics we covered by leaving a comment. In addition to our daily YouTube videos, Simple Flying publishes over 150 articles and a podcast every week. If you're looking for the latest aviation news and insights, visit simpleflying.com. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe before you go.